So we're good to go. February 6th, last day of Missouri goose hunt yeah. uh, season. We got as a long. So what what ends today? Specs and Canada's? Yeah. And then. Uh, Brant's too. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't forget the Brant's. That is correct. <laughs> yes. And then we have the conservation order coming up really quickly. It'll be right up I'm on us. I'm trying to think for the life of me if I've ever seen a Brant that I'm aware of. I haven't. And you've been over. Do you guys see those ever? Are they rare? I, I've never seen a Brant. And I'm, I mean, I'm sure if I've seen 5,000 honkers, maybe there's one in there, but it's like a black duck. I mean, I first saw my first one that I can honestly say I saw a black duck in Kentucky, and that was... Four weeks ago. Yeah, four weeks ago, mm-hmm. almost exactly. But it was one of those instances where, you know, you see a group of mallards coming, and you're like, boom. Actually, Bo pointed that out. He's like, that is a black duck. And I was like, holy smokes, that is absolutely a black duck. We couldn't get it to come in, unfortunately, but... It was a situation where you 100% knew that that was a black duck flying with those mallards, mm-hmm. um, but a brant. Yeah, brants are they're one of my bucket list birds, I believe. Sure, that's I think that's one of the things I need to work on getting on within the next couple of years. All right, but we got a, got a good amount of people watching right now. Um, 45. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, it, we it's 11 o'clock unannounced random live podcast. Yeah. Yeah. So, but. We usually start out with live. We say, you know, where you're watching from. Uh, definitely put that in the comments. And then if you're, if you had a great honker season, you got into them, go ahead and give it the the heart um, emoji or whatever. And then if you're ready for the snow geese, give it the thumbs up. I could not give it a heart. Or I if you're ready for turkeys, up. yeah, give it the smiling smiley face. face. Yeah, smiley yes, face. that's what I'm ready for. Yeah. I do not get into snow geese. Yeah, we got some guys popping in from Oregon, all sorts of stuff. But today we were going to kind of talk about goose season in review, our seasons in review. Um, Josh here, he's put the hurting on some honkers and some ducks. Been trying to. Yes. The past two months, really. I mean, it's been really pretty pretty good. Um, guys, if you don't know Josh, uh, he runs a the Outdoor Limits YouTube channel. Uh, mm-hmm. And it's duck and goose hunting. And, I mean all sorts of different outdoor stuff um he's been doing it for a little bit for decently how many years now um, five three probably five. five i was gonna say five for for real started the channel when i was in high school mm-hmm. and then picked it up again and then it kind of took off that's awesome yeah and yes it did take off for sure it took off <laughs> it took off no doubt about that yeah and so that's awesome. primarily you're doing duck and goose hunting mm-hmm. yep yep this spring hopefully i'll be doing some turkey hunting and fishing but you know t- I, I like to spend my time in the off season talking about how to call ducks here's some tips on how to kill ducks and decoy spreads and gear reviews so you know i like to talk about duck hunting in the off season i'm kind of an addict <laughs> yes as is anyone who's gotten into it deep knows that yeah it is very addicting so this year, one thing I do want to know is when we spoke last, it was what, September maybe? Mm-hmm. It was before the season, maybe October? It was October. right after teal season. Yeah, it was right after teal. Yeah. yeah. You had talked about you've, you've got your kayak, and then you talked about, you know, you've got a canoe. Which one did you utilize more this year? So I, u- I utilize my kayak more than my canoe. Um, it, the canoe I've got is an 11-foot, 9-inch mm-hmm. solo canoe. And I when I first got it, I was like, this is going to be perfect for mm-hmm. what I need. But – my needs kind of changed between last season and this season and it didn't really serve much of a purpose because I like to take a lot of decoys with me and that little canoe couldn't hold a whole hell of a lot. So I, I like the kayak because the sit on top kayak, it holds two dozen mallard floaters pretty easily. And, uh, it's a lot more stable and I feel more comfortable hunting out of it, especially on a lake. Mm -hmm. So that was the new venture this year was the kayak. That was last year. Last year, okay. Okay. Yeah. I, unfortunately, and you, and you tried a little bit of the canoe this year. Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. I wasn't able to get out in the kayak much because public land wasn't very good in my area. Mm-hmm. We had some water and rain and different weird season stuff like that to mm-hmm. play into that. Um. So, so did a little bit on the kayak, but what was what what did you find else that worked really well this year? Um, we do have some guys on here jumping in from Wichita, watches your channel all the time. Sweet. Welcome. And we got we got Jersey, North Dakota, you know, 
in Oregon here. I mean, all sorts of guys Minnesota. jumping in from uh, all sorts of all different parts of the country. But uh, that's right, Joey Mallard's bro, Mallard's bro. Yep. But uh, so a little bit of kayak this year. But what else did you find that was really uh, that really worked well? Was it certain spots or certain style of hunting? Um, were you hunting a lot of goose decoys and then killing mallards? Were you hunting, you know, floater mallards, you know, and then killing geese every once in a while kind of thing? I think some of the most effective tactics I've had was utilizing an A-frame blind this year. It, one, it's more comfortable, and then also I think it just it hides more people better. So if you're hunting with more than three guys or even three guys in one A-frame, it works perfectly. And... Um, I've had a lot of really good luck on farm ponds with geese this year mm -hmm. and um, got a friend, got multiple friends. We've got some awesome spots. They take me along and, you know, without them, wouldn't be going on these hunts. Yeah, that's true. And I think, I think you hit the nail on the head with the A-frame style of blind, often hiding three guys better because I, I do visit and hunt with friends and sometimes you try to get your blind, blinds all brushed in. I leave some brush on mine all the time, and then I always grab what's around too. But your hide's only as good as your weakest link. So if somebody slacks on brushing in their blind, mm -hmm. that's that's no bueno. So yeah. I think an A-frame where you can get somebody to just dive in and finish it off right there and, mm -hmm. and get that job done, yeah. Yeah, did you end up using two frame blinds quite a bit, or just, or, or is it a lot of times it's just one? So most of the time I was hunting with like five guys, so we would put two A frames together, and that worked out really well for us because you know you get you get a little bit more room with five guys and two A frames. We did fit four in the three man goose buster, <laughs> but uh, it got a little tight. Yeah. So, so guys, if you didn't know, we make a A frame style blind. It's called the three man goose buster blind, um, and Josh got to use one this year, but. We called it a three-man because we felt like it was – that's what we really needed to say because four guys, it gets really tight. You got a lot of guns sitting there hanging around. Um, it's just – I mean, you're shoulder to shoulder if you're, if you're, unless you're talking about maybe some kids can fit in there a little better. Mm -hmm. But four guys is a little much. So we called it a three-man blind, but it's still eight foot wide. But uh, And unfortunately, we are sold out at this point. We've had quite yeah. a few people ask, mm -hmm. hey, you know, snow goose season coming up. We want to get some. But I know. We'll have more this summer. Mm -hmm. We'll uh, we'll have some coming back in for the fall. Yeah, but uh, that was a good good blind, and uh, so on your hunting a lot of ponds and like kind of loafing areas, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, did you what kind of you know, decoys? I mean, did you use a lot of goose floaters, or did you use uh, full bodies, or was it a blend of everything? You throw out the whole loaf, you know, kind of. Like it was a pretty good mix on the goose goose uh, loafs that we were hunting. We would put out probably two to three dozen goose floaters, and you know five to six dozen full bodies on the bank just kind of making it look a little lively and match what we've been seeing when we scout yeah um shooting a lot of ducks over goose spread like that too not a lot of ducks not a lot of ducks no a lot of geese though did you have a good duck season this year ours was kind of hit and miss mine yeah. mine was kind of hit and miss i had a few good hunts but mainly it was pretty hit and miss yeah so, yeah we've talked about it we had like three major fronts during duck season one was right at the very beginning one was somewhere in the middle and one was like the last weekend yeah for us and we took advantage of all those fronts but after that it was like 75 and and great weather and um, that was literally the only time that the hunting was good too that yeah. was good it yeah, was we had you know, solid like some blizzards that would come in on sunday we'd be out there in the blizzard shoot our limit of mallards and then the next day we'd wake up and it would be 65 degrees and all <laughs> yeah. that snow would be melting <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, it's like, just right. crazy it was, yeah. a, it was very up and down winter this year it's starting to get a little and it was kind of up and down january not it got it definitely got colder here but it seemed like the, the the good push of honkers really didn't show up till a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, that's for sure. We yeah. we've seen a pretty good push of honkers. Yeah. Now in Kansas, we still have two weekends left of goose I season. Know. So we ended we're ending today. I mean, if we could go out this afternoon, we could get our last last straw, last last fighting effort. But I it mean, ends today. I'm and Snoggy starts tomorrow. I mean, after the podcast, we could make that happen, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, um, last day of Missouri, so. But uh, you still got a Missouri stamp. You're good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, guys, jumping in here. Um, there's a lot of a lot of guys talking about their first time this year. Um, killed the first Drake. Nice. Twenty two geese this year. First year, I think. Um, guy from Pittsburgh, Kansas, kind of local guy, but not. You know, he watches your channel all the time and. Sweet. 
you know, another guy first season. He said he killed it in, in Utah hunting solo. Utah is one of the places I'd like to go hunt. There you go. I think doing some Salt Lake action. Yeah. Utah and Montana both. Montana honkers, Utah yes. ducks. Mm-hmm. No weather in Alabama yeah. yet. Yeah, he j- cut his grass. He's been cutting his dra- grass in January. <laughs> Ouch. That's better than shoveling snow, I guess. Mm-mm. Yeah. No, I'd rather shovel snow because that means there's probably birds in a field somewhere. Yeah. Or on a pond. But, uh yeah, with the with the loaf ponds though, all these warm days, it made for phenomenal goose loaf spots. Yeah, they'd go for a quick feed, leave come the back. roost, get a quick feed, and come back to a loaf spot. And those warm sunny days, did they? And did what we talked about hunting geese on water, so much fun. Oh, oh it's, it's a blast. Yeah. Did they, so they work fun. really well. It oh, seems like every time they're yeah, just, just right into the pocket, just, ten yards away from the blind. Yeah, just waylay them. It, yeah, it was a blast. One of my buddies. At ten yards, I saw him smoke two geese with one shell. Oh yeah, that's that is fun. That's mm-hmm. pretty fun when they're that close and that tight. Um, did you did you have to do a lot of scouting? I mean, where there's like just kind of a lot of birds in the area, and you were you know they're loafing on here, here, and here. Or was it just like one area, one body of water, one it's little just pond? The same, mainly just the same pond over yeah. and over again. It's just a it's a hot spot, I guess. Yeah. Did you try to like not you know blow them out kind of thing or yeah we were pretty selective on when we hunted it but sometimes it came in as a plan b yeah when something fell through and it's like okay we're gonna go hunt here set up and you know i think the worst we did on that pond was shoot i don't know 13 geese yeah. which in missouri yeah you guys can shoot three apiece but in kansas we can shoot six exactly so I feel bad for you guys. Yeah. Well, like I was telling you earlier, yeah. we're looking for spots to hunt in Kansas more often than we are Missouri. Well, see, I live on the Kansas side too. Yeah. We just we didn't get into the hunkers. It was mm-hmm. very unfortunate. But you know, there's some states I didn't even realize it that um, I made a post a few days ago, like you know how many birds you're allowed. And I think there's a couple states on the East Coast where they're allowed one bird this year. Mm-hmm. I'm like, man, or like two mallards. Yeah, that's tough. That's tough. Go set up for one honker and then you're done. Yeah, I wouldn't. Uh, yeah, that's a tough call there. I mean, I love hunting. I love chasing geese, but for one goose, that's tough. Yeah. And and that's what I don't understand, too, because if you're on the border of that state, you might be right across the river from a spot where you can shoot three. Mm-hmm. For instance, Missouri and Kansas, we can literally just go on the other side of the river and go from three birds to six. It's, you yep. know, go figure. <laughs> that's how it works. So, so Johnny's jumping in here. He's saying that he's got a youth hunt tomorrow. I'm guessing ducks or something. I don't know. Um and he's got to watch for snakes. So that's the type of weather he's dealing with. Yeah, it sounds no like teal thanks. season here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Snakes, alligators. And yeah, mm-hmm. All the fun stuff. All the fun stuff. I can handle snakes. They don't bother me. Yeah. Alligators, I might be a little. I'm always, when I'm wading in farm ponds, I'm always scared I'm going to step on a snapping turtle. Yeah. And it's going to bite me. I've, I've kicked some turtles before, but I've never been bit. Leave in the comments. Yes. <laughs> have you guys ever been bit by a snapping turtle or while you're waiting? You guys down south, have you ever kicked an alligator underwater while you're waiting? And is it true that, like, they won't bite you while they're underwater? Is it like you pick a skunk uh, up by its tail and it won't spray you either? I mean, is this... I don't know about that one. <laughs> is, is this all real or is this, like, fake news? Um, interesting. I mean, I haven't encountered anything besides large stumps when I'm waiting. And, and that, then they usually... Or a rock. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, large have, stumps usually. A, I fall victim to those. A little overflow of a river area we hunt, and it is Stump City. And I'd rather deal with stumps than silty ponds. That is they true. Oh, we agree. This place, though, I will tell you, it's a silty and stumpy. <laughs> so it's the worst. Mm-hmm. It's the perfect duck lo- like duck height level. It's muddy, and it's just a great little spot. But, um, you know, it's not very deep, but it is silty, and there's a lot of stumps that are just under that water this year. And... Uh, don't get in a hurry. <laughs> you just you just start getting in a hurry, moving decoys around. You don't think about it. The next you step on a stump, and these stumps were so big that you can't like recover. Like your next step is like on the top of it, and then you still are falling. <laughs> and uh, every year, one person is always gonna you know eat it face first in the water. Mm-hmm. And you got to figure out you're so low, so you got to really got to figure out what are you gonna get wet. And you really got to try for your arms because if you don't. Your whole waders will fill up, and it's a mess. Okay, we, we need to apologize to Levi. He said he's trying to do homework, and we're, do, we're doing a podcast. Thanks, Josh. <laughs> Anytime, Levi. Yes. Levi hunts with me. Yeah. So. Yes. 
Oh, what a studious person. But yeah. yeah. I would be that. doing the same thing, homework to the side, watching. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So on the on these local pond hunts, um, setting up on A-frames, trying to keep the sun at your back? Uh, more with the wind at our back. Yeah, the I mean, sun doesn't yeah. play a huge issue. So you as got long wind as at your you back. Get, as long as you get good grass on that A-frame, you try and cover up that big hole in the middle, keep your heads down. Mm-hmm. Usually so no problem. You really, you know, really not cross shooting them too much, or kind of angled a little bit, or just you know they're coming right in at just you, straight in most of the time. Yeah. So you got to work on that hide, make sure. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. the hide's got to be good, and you got to keep the head head down because yeah. they're going to be looking right at you. Because mm-hmm. sometimes they'll come in and then they'll swing out and around around the blind and then swoop in. So if you you got to keep that grass covered for the most part. Yeah, you, you work see, on the sides pretty good too. So when they do swing, that. Mm, not as much as I should. <laughs> <laughs> it gets hard to keep up with it. Yeah. yeah. Cutting the grass and all that. Yeah. And then another thing that I struggle with sometimes is I'm filming with a camera. So it, sometimes I'm like, okay, can the birds see me? Can they not see yeah. me? But I've, I've found it's pretty easy. If you get kind of wispy grass in front of the blind, you can f- kind of film through that. Yep. So, so you're saying there's, do they swing once? You said they kind of come in, come around, and then jump right in there's usually one swing mm-hmm. or sometimes they just cup up and come right in other times they'll work you once or twice generally by the third time they swing you're either going to shoot at them or they're gone yeah so you, you do some of the calling when those situations and they're coming in so we've kind of talked about this in our last podcast but for you it's just different you know everybody's a different hunter for when they're coming in are you are you talking to them? Or are you trying to stay quiet unless you need to? Kind of what do you, what's your what's your calling my, thoughts? My my philosophy with geese on water is give them a little bit of clucks, some honks, and let them do the rest. Yeah. You don't need to talk to them. I was always told to just talk when they talk. So if a goose honks, you honk back. No crazy yeah. lesser sounds on a farm pond. It's just not realistic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you're just trying to. You're you're, you're, play, you're playing repeat kind of mm-hmm. you know back and forth. Mm-hmm. You, know, you hit it. And you try to yeah. You try to hit the same thing, same tone. I think that's that's why I like doing it. You know, geese out there honking and you're talking to them. You need you to start communicating, mm-hmm. and, and it's it's pretty fun to bring them in that way. Do you find yourself calling softer at all since that sound can bounce off that water instead of trying to blow them out when they're coming at you? I've never thought about that yeah. before, but yeah. I I try to keep it pretty low and mellow on a pond because mm-hmm. it's a it's a Loaf. loafing area. You're they're not just, screaming at them. Yeah, they're not fighting each other over a field. They're just on a pond, relaxing, enjoying the sunshine, eating some grass, yep. taking a swim. Nice little Wednesday. Yeah, yeah. Some other guys definitely watch your channel, and another guy's asking if you're doing some turkey hunting. We were just talking about yeah, that. We, yeah. We were just talking about turkey hunting. I'm hoping to get out and shoot a turkey this year. Yeah. Uh, might be a little bit difficult with all the personal stuff going on but hopefully i'll find time to get out in the turkey woods mm-hmm. absolutely and I've, I've got a question all you guys from kansas this year josh and i were talking about this i live in kansas he lives in kansas so i had a buddy who called me last night and he's like dude kansas is only one bird this year we just looked it up and we read it and it reads that units one and two are still two birds but then i've got two different kansas zone spring maps. turkey zone maps and i'm so confused so you guys listening right now, what can you find? Like, I'm, we couldn't figure it out from the two different spring turkey maps. I would trust the one on the website yes. more than the one that your friend sent you. But it's, it says Kansas spring turkey map. So it that's does, why I'm confused. You say 2020 or 2019. It had no date. It had no date. Neither of them did. But the one on the on the website had managed turkey. I just don't know if that's different than just like normal. Like managed, yes. is that only, I don't know. But it's like deer management zones. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. I, I don't know. Growing Anyways. up in Missouri, but now living in Kansas, it's all kind of foreign to me on how they do things because you, you get set on one system, conservation, rules, seasons, and mm-hmm. all that, and then it's hard to bring it all together for a whole new system. But I don't know. Spring turkey hunting is, like, my thing. That's what I love to do. So that really concerns me. Yeah. I are felt you, it. Are you still going with the bow this year, or are you going to take out the, the boomstick? <sighs> I've been saying for the last three years that I want to shoot a turkey with a shotgun again because I haven't for like three years. You've been shooting all And then I can't wait until the gun season because in Kansas, uh, you know, a week ahead of time, you can go out with your bow. Yeah. And so that gets me out there a week earlier because I can't wait any longer. And then, boom, I shoot them all on the same day or one on Saturday, one on Sunday, and then I'm it. That's it. So I want to shoot one with a gun again. That's a horrible problem to have. Exactly. But I want to shoot them with a gun. It's so fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I want to do some running gunning this year. It oh, is. More, it's, it's a, a little bit more than than like set up a spread and hunt. I want to do some just like some like locate tons of locator like move in mm-hmm. you know stock it. So mm-hmm. I'm gonna do I'm gonna do that. That's how I'm gonna hunt this year. Okay, um, this year I'm gonna try and hold out until gun season in Kansas. I'm gonna try. I might even do some some cruising some rivers. And then stopping and, and locating, and then go down a little bit farther and locate, and go down a little bit farther and stop and locate. And That'd be kind of fun to do on a kayak. That's what I'm saying. A kayak. I'd probably be using a canoe, but uh, yeah, kayak, canoe, whatever. Mm-hmm. I've got some some real skinny water, or some real tight river areas that I know have turkeys because I've seen them there in that area. And yet, you know, I think the rule is you have to be outside the blind to do or outside the canoe to to do the locator stuff. So mm-hmm. you just kind of pedal down, go 100 yards or 500 yards, and then jump out. You know, get up in a good area to where your locator, if you're using an owl hooter, hooter or, you know, crow, whatever, you can just beat the side of the canoe if you want to. <laughs> well, yeah, shut truck doors. That gets turkeys to yeah. every time. So. But then just try to find find where some, some toms are at, and then you can go go jump around. And Well, and the thing, too, is, I mean, all you got to do is pull the liners out of your waders, and they're comfortable enough you can just wear them. Yeah, yeah. So, so that, that works. That's what I'm going to try to do this year. It might be fun. That would be fun. Do you bow hunt at all? No, I don't. Don't bow hunt. Have you shot a, had a shot a bow, compound bow? I've r- shot one, Traditional, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I have a recurve, but yeah, I would. I thought about turning that into a bow fishing bow. Yeah, I was hoping you'd do like recurve Canada goose loaf pond hunt. Crossbow. Yeah. <laughs> I'd do a crossbow. I, I've done a compound uh, goose hunt on a, on a pond, which is pretty fun, but. You know. Recurves are so big and bulky that would be, be tough. tough. You'd have to like lay down and then at the last minute. But kinda. think about it. It could be a frame blind with a crossbow on top. Oh yeah, that'd that be so fun. Absolutely. But with absolutely. the guillotine heads. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Anyways, <laughs> we're just taking a another Mallards bro yeah. thrown out there. Oh yeah. Yep. Yeah, he's a lot of good. He's got, got a lot of good Canada goose hunts, guys. If you haven't seen the channel and you want to mm-hmm. watch some of that hunt, um, that's what a lot of guys are jumping in and saying. Um, we've had a had a pretty good season with with uh, ducks and geese, but it could have been better with the weather. I mm-hmm. can answer this question from Brandon. I'll tell you, Brandon. Um, I always use like a Sawyer like permethrin spray. It's the mm-hmm. yellow stuff. You spray it all over your clothes. I do inside and out, and then I let it dry. But one thing I started doing probably, it's probably been about five or six years ago, and it's going to oh, sound really you're weird. eating something, right? I take a garlic supplement, like a garlic vitamin. Oh, yeah, it's a lot of garlic. Yes, <laughs> and but you don't smell like garlic. But I just take a, a garlic vitamin supplement. It's I don't remember how many milligrams or whatever, but it's just one of those little clear gelatin things. And I could tell you for the last like five or six years, as much time as I spend in the woods hunting mushrooms, hunting spring turkeys, looking for sheds, I don't think it's been... I mean, I've probably had one, maybe two ticks actually that have bit and hooked in me that I found, you know, a couple hours later in probably five years, probably three ticks total. I'll find some crawling on me, but not very much. So the combination of the permethrin spray and taking a garlic supplement, man, I and maybe that's an old wives' tale, but it seems to have worked for me, so I just keep doing it. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yep. So a garlic supplement and that permethrin spray, and I'm no no problem. Yeah. So does he start smelling like garlic at the eyes? No. <laughs> no. No, no, he doesn't. But I remember he did something different. We all I've never done that, but I've done the permethrin for sure. We always do yeah. the per- permethrin bath or we take, you know, usually when we go up and do this stuff, either we're working on a deer property or we're turkey hunting or something like that in the spring. We'll take, we'll, you know, we'll drive up and, you know, whatever clothes you got on. But then we'll have a next set of clothes in a bag that kind of goes out on a trailer on the back of the truck and we drench. And a lot of times you want to do this the night before. Yes. And we coat this stuff and inside out and permethrin and, uh, you know, you got to let it dry and then like overnight kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And then, and then put it on and, you know, kind of, you can tuck some pants into the socks kind of stuff and help that way. But it does, I mean, the permethrin does really well. Now I've used several other brands. Um, I think it's, it's like Repel. They make like a, a green can, a blue can, a red can. And I've tried all of those and I've put them on and I didn't let it fully dry. And one, it didn't keep the ticks off. And two, like I, it created like some sort of rash on my leg, right? Like was wet on my leg and, yeah, it was no good. It was there for a couple of days. So when it says make sure it's dry, make sure it's dry. Yeah. Because you never and, know what's going to happen. And the guy who asked the question, Brandon, he, yeah. he did say he, he heard about the garlic supplement thing, and he thought it, someone was messing with him. Dude, I, I promise you, Brandon, it, it has worked for me. Now, I don't know, but it works for me. So yeah. I stick to it. Maybe it's a superstitious, but It uh, looks a little, a little yellow during you know that time of you know, year. Season, but, yeah. But it's all right. 
<laughs> so yeah, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep doing it. I encourage you to try it. Yeah, I'll have to try it. Do it. I'll if, see. If, if I I hate ticks and especially with that crap now where you can't eat the red meat from the Lone Star tick, I want none of that. No, I don't want mm, any of that. No, it's not for me. Thanks. No. I mean, I, I I'm probably a, a five to ten a year kind of guy. Um, I use permethrin a lot. Sometimes we get lazy, and I, we just have to rely on really heavy-duty bug spray. But um, I'll have to try it and see if I can get less than that. It works. Mm. Yeah. So, but, yeah, I'm sticking to it. We got a knowledge bro out there. We Mallage, what's, your hats, what's your hat say? Oh, it says Spoonies, bro. <laughs> hey, there we go. <laughs> Give Hollywood. us Spoonie love. That's right. You yeah. have to. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So we're uh, – I, mean, I guess it sounds like our minds are on turkey right now, but – the spring conservation order for us starts in tomorrow. Yeah. Um, but for you, I don't know if it starts tomorrow or not. But uh, mm -mm. you got any plans to do any of that? Um, I don't know. You don't know? Work on something? I'm not a big snow goose guy. Yeah. But if I get a phone call from one of my buddies that says, hey, I got a snow goose feed, yeah. I might go. Mm -hmm. But snow geese, they just, they're the white devil. Literally. <laughs> hate them. <laughs> yes. Hate, hate, hate them. So I don't hunt them much anymore, but I used to live up north where a buddy and I, we tried to have some snow goose spread. So we'd get like 10 guys, and between 10 guys, we'd have several hundred snow goose decoys. Mm -hmm. But, you, yeah, one, you got to have 1,000 decoys or it's not going to work. And two, we'd set out five or 600 decoys, and we'd get them all set out, and then you'd get a group of 25 birds that would go sit in the field next to you. Mm -hmm. And then all the rest of the afternoon, thousands of birds would go where those 25 did, and you're just watching them. It's just they're the devil, white mm -hmm. devils, absolutely. Yeah. I don't like them. I don't like Too them Too much either. work, and yeah. To me, that's one of those situations where if I really want to shoot some snow geese, one, it's guys that have already got all the stuff, or mm -hmm. two, just pay you whatever and go with an outfitter for a day or two, let them do all the work. If you really want to shoot them that bad, mm -hmm. go with an outfitter. Yeah. It's easy. They do all the work. It's You just go and sit and shoot. Yeah. One of my friends that I went with last year is an outfitter. Mm -hmm. You know. It's the way you do it. Yeah, you know? exactly. It's so much easier. Yes. I've got a friend, too, that is an outfitter for that. I might have to hit him up this year because it's been a few years. But yeah. there's, I, I don't have any desire to own a snow goose spread mm -hmm. at all. Or the room, right? <laughs> no. It's like all of the storage unit you got to do or something. Exactly. I yeah. mean, you gotta have a whole other outdoor barn or facility to keep that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, Levi said that you will have a turkey bow kill this year. By the way, oh, it might be news to you. I <laughs> didn't know that. He's never <laughs> told me that before. There you go. Um, and in Kansas, you can use crossbows. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, Missouri. I guess you can now too, can't you? Yeah, uh, I don't know. Well, they don't have a separate archery season over here in Missouri, and you got to quit hunting at one, and you can only shoot one bird the first week. Lame, Missouri, lame. Yeah, well, they, yeah. they got they got good numbers. Of we turkeys. got good turkeys, yeah. and we got some rules to follow, and we'll get out there and get at them. Yeah, but uh, Sean likes turtles. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> so decoys and blind hunting loaf this year. Or what kind of what kind of steel were you using this year? And uh, did you try different things out? Like shot? Shot? Yeah. Yeah, I was what using for pretty much the whole season. I was shooting black clouds, and I was shooting a three inch double B black clouds at geese and three inch two shot. At the ducks. ducks. Yeah. Did you like the way it worked for you this year? Yeah, it worked great. Yeah. Now, what did you shoot last year? Uh, I was shooting Federals as well. Okay. So you've shot them for a couple of years, mm -hmm. so yeah. you didn't try and switch anything up this year. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. We got Speed Shock has been a really big hit this year, and Black Cloud is always a, a really big one, and then the TSS. Did mm -hmm. you shoot some of the TSS? Yeah, I shot some of that TSS this year, too. Got yeah. to try some of that out. and It's fun. Oh, my gosh. So I was it up. Yeah. Nails the geese. Yeah. I was up in Canada and watch a guy shoot a, a snow goose at about 90 plus uh, it went down for sure and he said he had to leave it by like two canoes is what his length was and i don't know why to use canoes as a measurement but he said when he was leading it it's like two canoes length and you could hear the shot and then you could hear the impact of the tss and then you can watch the bird fall. But it's, it's a snow goose, though. Snow yeah. goose, one BB. Yeah. I'm dead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's interesting. It's crazy to hear it. Yeah. No. Because it was boom, and then it went, and then mm -hmm. and then it fall. Yeah, yeah. I shot a I shot a goose at probably 45, 50 yards this year. And just, just stoned it. Stoned it. Yeah. Like it was at 20. It's That stuff doesn't mess around. No. No. I, mean, I, shot, I shot my turkey last year with some of those TSS turkey loads as well. And those things... Oh yeah, they pack a punch. That's what I want to use this year. 
yeah, I've always, you know, been a kind of a bow guy for turkey, but I'm now I'm just I'm just a run out there with a three and a half inch something. TSS or something. I still got so much long beard XR that I bought five years ago. That's, that that's the same with me. I got some long beard XR that I haven't used up yet. Yeah, because I haven't shot up. Yeah. So I'll shoot that. Yeah. You if have I to can wait, though. Out. Yeah, if I can hold out. Ah, that's why Nebraska is fun, though. March 25th, it opens up. Really? Yeah. yeah. Super early. Or, I mean, down south, I think. Um, hey, what happened to our feet? What would you do? Hello, are we still there? We're working on it, guys. We still there? Know. It looks like it's still there. Okay. Yeah. It said waiting on live live feed or live video, but I don't know if we blacked out or not. Okay. Well, anyway, but. yeah, down south, I think Alabama, Mississippi, they open up a little earlier too, but mm -hmm. Nebraska's close, yeah. and you have connections in Nebraska, yeah. so that makes it simple. So, so. It, it's good for those guys that don't want to wait until mid-April, like Kansas or Missouri. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what did you – so you kind of – you did a little bit of traveling – not, um, I guess for your hunting season, you did Nebraska and obviously Kansas and what, any other states? We went to Missouri. Went to Missouri, but that's kind of that dead area you kind of yeah. hung around in. Yeah. yeah. I'm hoping to do some more traveling next year. Yeah. That's See, Oklahoma would be the one to go. I mean, they got some good waterfowl down there, and it wouldn't be too mm -hmm. far. Oklahoma or Texas would be nice. Yeah. Um, yeah. Any know. thoughts of going to Canada ever? I'd like to, just to experience it. Yeah. But – it's expensive mm -hmm. and i don't know see to me i i've never been to, i've been to canada many times not for waterfowl hunting but i'm all about i'd much rather go to like utah mm -hmm. or montana or places like that because yes i love to shoot birds but it's all about just the experience and the idea and all the stories you hear about like those locations and mm -hmm. just mountains in the background with honkers and stuff like that to me yeah i value that just as much as you know a pile of birds it's a yeah. lot about the experience because so. i mean you'll shoot your birds regardless mm -hmm. right unless you get severely unlucky mm -hmm. you know five birds in canada is the same five birds in the states yeah but i don't know early season geese is something i'd like to try too but south dakota does that north dakota yeah how early, early? I don't like know. September? Yeah, there's some that August. are pretty early. I know we have an October early goose in Missouri, mm -hmm. but I know that Minnesota and some of them up there have some early goose. Like oh, when, yeah. I remember talking like our waterfowl weekend's going on, and people are like, I'm buying goose decoys because tomorrow or like next week I'm <laughs> yeah. going goose hunting. I'm like, it's August, dude. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I want to go shoot geese wearing shorts and a t-shirt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Crocs. I have, to, I have to figure out the dates on that, but there is some – I think Minnesota's got something like that, or they did, or and I can't remember. Anybody but. from Minnesota watching, let us know when your early goose season is. Yeah. Wisconsin, Minnesota, somebody up there has an early season. I know they do. Yeah. yeah. No, I was looking online at some cool places like um, San Francisco Bay. That would be pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Something like I think it was San Francisco Bay. I don't know. Someplace down in California, mm -hmm. kind of by Mexico. Hmm. See, and I think, too, like I want to go – I mean, we've talked with Mario from FA several times, and he's, they said they've got five or six different subspecies of geese. Yeah. Man, I'd love to go out there and just stack up four or five different types of geese. Yeah, I like this. Yeah. I just want the big ones. Yeah, the yeah. giant honkers. Yeah, exactly. I we were talking to Bo geese. Brooks. He's like, all right, guys, these guys are talking about the big geese because yeah. he's from the Pacific Northwest, too. Yeah. He's like, he's like, we get to see all these cacklers and all these different See, different we don't geese. get that around here. And, hey, then, cacklers. and he's like, guys, we're talking about the big, like the real big ones. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was kind of funny. Because yeah. I think they call, have some geese out there, like oh, there's you know some big geese, but they're really not what we see here in Kansas. We have some. They're not feet the size of your hand. Yeah, yeah. wing spread the size of. So we got some guys yours. there. Stephen, uh, yeah. Illinois. Early September, September in Minnesota. Hmm. Yeah, Illinois September first to the twelfth. So that's that's I mean that's before our teal. You know, yeah. that's, if you want to travel, do a little bit of early honker. Oh man, somebody wants to know what the shotgun you're shooting. Oh, Winchester SX4. Okay. SX4. Mm -hmm. You like it? I love it. Yeah, good. We're Benelli guys. Yeah. But, I mean, if you got a gun, doesn't jam up on you that you like, that feels good, and you shoot good with it, it doesn't don't matter. change it. Yeah, it doesn't matter yeah. what it is. It shoots birds. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> it's uh, It's been beat up, though. Oh, yeah. I'm real rough on mine. Um, too much, probably. But <laughs> yeah. I've seen you dump water out of it many times. Yeah. I don't care. Yeah. It still shoots. Exactly. <laughs> I'm yeah. a little bit too confident. The f my first gun was a Stoger, and if I got water in it or something weird happened, it wouldn't it wouldn't eject the shell right. Yeah. And uh, after th and then I jumped into a Super Black Eagle, and, and then I've been able to – I've really put it in some bad situation, and it still runs like a champ. So I'm pretty proud 
that it, that it does that, but I also now I'm probably a little bit more relaxed, relaxed in, in my care when I'm in the field. It, it use it guys, as a boat paddle, yeah, break whatever, ice break ice, it. boat paddle, whatever, sitting in the mud. You know, a lot of guys I see when we sit in like these muddy areas, they'll like get a piece of like a layout, a blind bag where they set their gun on, or they get something, mm-hmm. a bunch of grass, and they pad it up for their gun. And mine's like three inches into the mud, and the mud's just all the way up the, the stock and whatever yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah mine's mine's got a bent rib and covered in rust <laughs> it's uh but it kills birds oh it kills birds yeah mine mine got a little bit it's an older shotgun but it got a little bit of uh rust spots on it so i, I said to it i'm gonna cerakote it and then i've done some other accessories mm-hmm. to it to make it a little bit more bulletproof so i like mine brandon wants to know when you're getting a dog when i oh, get oh yeah dog. that is gonna be that get, is the debate you need to get that this spring that's see you know where's the debate and with who <laughs> i've got a i'm getting married in april that's why the turkey's gonna May. be a little bit yes. iffy on the, in yeah april. i know it's this whole like personal life stuff it's kind of yeah. getting in the yes. way of hunting but yeah, you, you know i i do want to get a dog sure. soon and whether it's to hunt it with this next season probably not but hopefully you know i'll get a dog but i want to make sure like it's trained well because it's got to sit in the kayak with you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. My ideal dog that I want to get is a small female yellow lab. Um, that, I just like the little ones. I like the, the size of them. They'll work great for my hunting style. Mm-hmm. They'll retrieve geese. They'll retrieve ducks. And, uh, you know, I, for me, I don't know anything about dog training. I've never owned a dog in my life. So I would probably opt to have a mostly finished dog. Mm-hmm. And then work with it from there. Yeah, that's, I mean that's you can't go wrong with that. You know, mm-hmm. let let a professional that knows what they're doing take care of that. They can educate you a little bit along the mm-hmm. way, and then yeah, you'll have a great dog that way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure. No, no, nothing wrong with that at all. Do you guys have dogs? No, not yet. I have had dogs over the years, but none of them waterfowl dogs. So that type of training is is, is completely foreign to me. I've got people that have waterfowl dogs. I've worked with them a little bit, but not to the extent of okay, here's a puppy, and I'm going to train this dog, and it's going to be a finished dog by the time I'm done with it. I don't mm-hmm. have that level of experience. So I would probably go the same route you are personally. Mm-hmm. Mostly finished mm-hmm. to where, like, it's got basic commands done, but then you can hone in with the dog and get to know it and, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, sure. I'm, a, I'm a DIY guy. So if I win, or you know, it's not if, but when I, when I do something like this, it's going to be I'm going to dive into every book and, thing mm-hmm. i can get my hands on and oh yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna be you know communicating work with people in there who've done it you know and just dive in head first and try to get it done myself and how i want it to be done you mm-hmm. know um i've seen a lot of good working dogs i've seen a lot of dogs that aren't so mm-hmm. i definitely know where i wanted this path to go but yeah. i just that's well, just me when it comes to training i think and the people i've seen train their own dogs you definitely get out of it what you put into it that's for Th- sure. That is one of those things. Now, I would probably have a waterfowl dog mostly finished, but then I would take it one step further and train that dog to find shed antlers too because that's one thing I love doing, especially in the spring coming up real you should, soon. You should train a dog to find morels. Oh, I've already thought about that too. Is that a thing? I You don't hear about it, but like if once you get in morels, you can actually smell them. So I, there's no way a dog couldn't smell them. Has anybody ever trained your dog to find morel mushrooms? Please leave a comment if you have. Yeah. You want a shed dog. Right? Oh, yeah. Even oh, though yeah. you are a shed dog. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, go find, I'll go find like three mm-hmm. for a whole morning when we're out here in the, you know, doing work on a deer property. He'll come back like he can't even hold them all. He's just <laughs> – you yes. got them everywhere in your hood, you know, like a big armful, and yeah. he just finds them all. One, I, one of my friends, they use duck totes to carry their antlers. When they shed hunt. Oh, don't call him that. He won't see him for eight hours. Just a tip. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I have not thought about that. That is brilliant. We'll I usually just strap him to a backpack. Yeah, we'll go out that's... to the deer property, and we'll be either be maybe burning or mowing or getting ready, you know, doing some stuff to get prop, uh, prep for food plots, and we'll spend some time shed shed hunting, and it'll be like an hour's worth. And I'll, I'll really strike out, and I'm just – and Aaron will be in the walking in the weirdest places, and it's just – He's got a pile. The whole bucket full just everywhere. It's, it's I love it. Funny. It's well, one, it's just fun to walk in the woods and it's exercise. And two, you've been cooped up all winter. So, because from like 
basically the end of January to the first of March. February just sucks. Mm -hmm. There's nothing to do. It's before turkey season. I'm not a snow goose guy, so you've been cooped up for a month. But spring, everything's coming to life. If you're if you got a deer property, walking looking for sheds, man, that really gets you out, and you learn more about the property. You yep. find the bedding areas. You find the food sources. The trails going back and forth to and from new mm -hmm. potential stand sites. I love it. Yeah, it's good for the deer. Oh yeah. And you and you find out who survived the season. Yeah, the Orange Army. <laughs> survived the Orange Army. Yeah, the Orange Army. <laughs> That's exactly right. So, what do we got here? More comments. So, I mean, he was a guy. He was asking who has an SX4, just like you. He was asking about what. I mean, how, how often do you oil it and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, the series up here. I think I read that one. Yeah, he's never used a gas system. He's just asking how often you oil it, and then uh, somebody else is jumping in. It's saying the gas the gas system is dirty, but definitely easier to shoot, less recoil, so your follow ups are better. Mm -hmm. um, so when it comes down to cleaning my gun, you know, once every two three weeks I'll clean it. Um, if I notice it's getting really dirty, then I'll go ahead and clean it then. But most of the time it's not too bad. And um, yeah, mine usually gets a once over after the season or if i think i'm taking it turkey hunting a once over after turkey season so it's clean from like the first of june to about the first of september mm -hmm. and then after that it's teal season and the yeah. duck and goose and then it it never really gets cleaned yep. yeah i haven't noticed anything too bad with the gas system um i like it it shoots great yeah. i shot my buddy's beretta i think he's got the a300 and comparing my Winchester to that Beretta, they're both gas-operated guns, but the Winchester does not kick as hard. And it's really? a little, I think it's a little lighter, too. Interesting, because usually the lighter gun will, I think, kick mm -hmm. a little bit more than a heavier one, I would say. Uh, isn't that right? Um, but I was, where was I going with that? I, I clean my gun three or four times a season, probably. Um, but, like... Aaron was talking about like one of the spots we hunted last year and we still have hunted it. We had to like wade through like almost like you know, almost filling up your wader level. Mm -hmm. And usually I have my gun over my shoulder and it's getting soaked. Mm -hmm. So I don't like it to sit at home that bad. So, um, it's about, you know, three to four times a season I'll clean it. And then, uh, but when I'm out there, I'm throwing, you know, the protecting the gun from getting dirty is all out the window. I'm just, I'm there to hunt and it's going to get put wherever it needs to be put. And, it's going to get muddy, filled with water, whatever, you know. Yeah, I was going to say, and I always keep mine in the case in the jet sled. There's a lot of times you didn't. It would oh, go on no. the bottom of the jet sled and then decoys on it and then. Yeah, I didn't. A lot of times the gun case <laughs> didn't even leave the, the room. You know, it's <laughs> like the gun just, you know, just went along over my shoulder and yeah. got out to the, put thrown in the sled and, yeah. You know. It's what it is. And but, it still works though, man. Yeah. So, yeah, what's what's next? snow goose and then turkey and yeah. fishing and fishing. then fishing yeah. i didn't do any fish you do a lot of fishing i mean i try to yeah, yeah. he's about to start kayak fishing mm -hmm. hey i got into crappie fishing last year i used to be big into bass fishing mm -hmm. and i said you know i want to try crappie fishing and i started doing it. i'm like wow this is pretty fun yeah well that and they taste a lot better they taste yeah. really good oh, i'm not a big fish eater what really yeah i i mainly just throw them back oh I, I, do for, I do it for fun. That, there's nothing wrong with that. Hey, you man. go fishing with me, you can take my fish. Okay. Ditto. Deal. Deal. Uh, I love crappie. They're so good. Fresh crappie, fresh mm -hmm. merle mushrooms in the spring. Oh, I'll do the mushrooms. Yeah. yeah. That, we don't even talk about the trifecta there. Is like, yes. you know, like spring turkey, crappie, and fried mushrooms yes. all in one day. Oh, yeah. It can be done. It can be done. I have been a part of that before, and it's amazing. Yeah, we've definitely been turkey hunting to where, like, after we're done turkey hunting, we're catching crappie. Like, mm -hmm. the, like we didn't even leave that area. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yes, the trifecta. That's yeah, it's so good. We got a random question. They're just asking if we do a podcast later in the day. We normally do, but we got this one. Had we kind of got, we didn't know if we were going to do it live, but we, we were going to do it today here early in the morning. Mm -hmm. um, this podcast will be posted on YouTube. On YouTube, and you can watch it later on Facebook, and you can listen to it like in your car mm -hmm. on the on a. 
on our Rogers podcast, and that'll sure. go so what, be, next Wednesday or something. Yeah, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, yeah, Stitcher Google, yeah, whatever, Google Spotify. Podcasts. It'll be on all of them, so you can listen to it there. But if you want to watch it, obviously it'll be on Facebook. It'll live there forever. It'll get posted on YouTube next week as well, so you can watch it there. But yeah, Josh. Um, I, we really don't do a lot of live podcasts. It's just when we have the opportunity to have someone here, we'll yep. just boom, we'll whip one out. And we surprised Josh with one. He's like, "All right, live." Sure, I thought cool. we were just yeah. recording it, and then you're like, "We're going to turn the cameras on." Uh, yeah, go. why not? I'm like, all right. So, but yeah, it's always fun. People like to watch them. So, yeah. anything else interesting happened this year? Kind of season review. Um, just black cloud three inch BBs and a lot of goose on the loaf pond. Mm-hmm. Um, see a lot of specs? No, no, not a lot of specs in my area. Really? We saw a I, whole bunch. I thought last the last weekend. video I saw that you posted, there were specs. I could hear them in there, and you're mm-hmm. like, "Nah, this this get this this go with the geese. We're not yeah. worried about the specs." Well, the specs weren't in season when I filmed that video. Oh yeah. So we had a bunch of cacklers and specs working us. I'm like, um, I don't like this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can't do it. So they weren't in season. Two, huh? Then two honkers come in at yep. 25. Yeah, I don't know. For me, this year, this season was probably one of the poorer seasons for me personally. Just I didn't get a lot of hunting done. Um, I was really busy and committed in the three weather fronts we had, yeah. so I really didn't get out much. And other than that, I mean, all the birds in this area seem to find those small holes of water in neighborhood ponds, city lakes, um, just up north of here, you know. Uh, outside of the, the, the metro, people have, you know, a two-acre lot, and they've got a half-acre mm-hmm. just pond next to their house. And if any of that small water never freezes up, they never go to the big water mm-hmm. where we hunt. So yeah, they're just sitting in backyards, city ponds, parks, neighborhood ponds, and that's what I ran into. And it just wasn't a good season for me. So 2020 is going to be a better year. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully public land is better this year because most of the public land that I hunt and I know really well, it was underwater all summer long. It never got planted or anything. There was no vegetation in it mm-hmm. at all. So, no ducks. Yeah. Just and didn't, wasn't attractive anymore. Mm-mm. Hmm. No. And, I mean, sure, the little bit of wild stuff will grow up in it, but it's nothing like, you know, the corn, the millet, the beans, the well, anything that get planted that Yeah, and, and a lot of the marshes that I hunt, they don't plant that in there. Mm-hmm. So, it's a lot of just natural smart weed and barnyard grass and aquatic vegetation that the ducks love but in order for that to grow it has to be dry yeah. yes yeah. and then it has to get sunlight and if it's under four feet of water no there, you're not getting any of that there's happening. so much stuff that they eat that we, we don't even think about or we don't little, even know little bugs in the water snails bugs but like even the in the type of uh like vegetation that we don't i don't you know i don't know the name of all of it but they you know that some of that natural stuff is good but like you said you got to have it's got to grow at the right mm-hmm. time naturally, and it's got to, you know. If there's no food, there's no ducks. Yep. Facts. So we'll see. We'll see. Hopefully we don't get everything flooded out again in the Midwest this year. Well, it's tough. And we're in better shape this time of year than we were last year, I think. We haven't had as much snow and no, yeah. not at all. and weather. The only thing that worries me is I, I haven't paid attention to the snowfall that they had in Montana, North Dakota, and South Dakota, because that all dumps into the Missouri, that snow melt. Mm -hmm. And then if we get, you know, 30 inches of rain in March and April on top of that, something crazy like that, then you've got the snow melt and all of that. And that's what killed us last year. Mm -hmm. Not only all the rain, but all the snow melt. So anybody watching up in Montana, North Dakota, South Dakota, how's your snow situation? Are you going to, I mean, is it going to be absurd? Of course, and then a lot of that too. People want to blame the Corps of Engineer for you know holding the water and then dumping it out all at once on the dam systems along the river. It, it's a mess. Yeah. Well, I don't have it figured out. So hopefully, we don't have as much. We had highways knocked out and stuff. Literally yeah. knocked out. Interstates closed. Yeah. That was pretty bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was. Yeah, it um, was. So this guy Chad, he's got a mushroom walleye turkey. Poor man's grand slam. Hey, I'll take that too. I, I'll, I'll take the walleye. Yeah, yeah. you oh, can take the crappie. <laughs> yeah, walleye's yeah. so good. But yeah. yeah, we don't have a lot of walleye around here. I mean, no, there's certain lakes in Kansas and Missouri where you can find them, but mm-hmm. not common. Deeper spring-fed lake. Yeah, yeah. You can get some. We have a lake north of here, Smithville, that they're there. But you have to really, you got to know know your stuff, and you'll have to be really going after them. But we find in the, the turkey season, it's like the crappie are just like easy. You can turn around. 
if they got crappie in there, you can turn around any body of water and you can usually find out where they're at pretty quick. Well, and I think too in the spring, um, it's a good time to get kids outdoors because turkey hunting, it's kind of like waterfowl hunting. You don't have to sit still. You don't have to be quiet. You don't have to be scent free. So a lot of kids like to turkey hunt, but crappie fishing so good for kids too, because you get into them. It's a lot of action. It's not like that. You're, you're not fishing. If you take the kid, you're <laughs> the one taking the fish off the hook. True story. But they enjoy the it. On, but they boom, enjoy it. it again. Worms, yeah. minnows, they love it. So, but yeah. it's, it's constant action. The crappie usually, if you're in a school of them, but yeah. yeah. So what else? trying to think uh anything going on at rogers i mean we uh just kind of keeping up with uh all this all the orders we had a great holiday season we appreciate everything you guys did but uh yes thank you our snow goose flyer went out and so our season starts tomorrow so mm -hmm. anybody wanting to go out there and give their best shot and they're trying to add some full bodies or socks or whatever you know um we got the snow goose flyer out with a bunch of deals there and then you know we have a in-store fishing event coming up at the end of the month mm -hmm. you'll see more about that next week and if you guys want to see the turkey flyer it's going to be here about the same time in a month you know right at the beginning last little bit of february early march is when our turkey flyer and it's just for turkey and i didn't realize how much decoys we carry for turkey decoys we carry it that holy cow we got done with all the decoys in the flyer and it was like four pages more than we did last year that's um, right. Wow. Digital only flyer, kind of like the Snow Goose flyer, not print. Um, but but we'll, we'll have links to it. Very interactive. Well. You can click on it and go in and all this stuff. But mm -hmm. uh, And this one I have decoys, turkey ammo, turkey vest, turkey ground clothing, blinds. ground blinds, chairs, turkey chairs, all the good stuff. Foot, some footwear, you know, that stuff. TSS. Yep. Some turkey TSS, some third Recommend. degree. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Third uh, degrees. Third thing. degrees. Oh, yeah. So that's the blend. I was thinking about that one, too. You could do the straight TSS, or you could do a third degree, which has TSS. It has five, the, sixes, and sevens. Yeah, and it has the uh, flight stopper mm -hmm. pellet, and it has copper plate. All mm -hmm. three, five, six, seven. It's a pretty, pretty gnarly little load there. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it absolutely is. I, I, I've not shot all of that. Like I said, I've got the Longbeard XR that I've had for I couldn't tell you how long. Like the first year it came out, and then I just I bow hunt all my turkeys. But I stoned a turkey at fifty one yards a couple years back with it. It's probably really? been about four years. But yeah, just stone one. Yeah, and it's one thing that's fun for me is is the next page after turkey uh, ammo is uh, turkey chokes, and mm -hmm. we have some TSS chokes. We have some 410 TSS chokes that are because that's a new it's a thing. These youth are now using 410s and TSS, and they can kill any turkey a 12 gauge could. <laughs> oh yeah. You know? So we got some 410 TSS turkey chokes. We have all the big you know Indian Creek Jebs Pattern Master. All these, Carlson's. you know, Carlson's is a, Carlson's is the bigger one, like with mm -hmm. more options, you know. But um, they have a TSS, they have an extended turkey, and they have a imported extended turkey, and they have a long beard specific one too. Um, so they have, and there's some Primos too. There's a lot of options there, and you can really buy a choke kind of made for your load. And then, and when I say that, the guys at Carlson, when they make a long beard choke, they are using Longbeard, and they are trying all sorts of different things to find the best pattern. Mm -hmm. So they've done a lot of homework for you. Mm -hmm. You know, you can, you know, the turkey guys buy their, buy their ammo, buy their choke, and they shoot it at a turkey. You know, shoot and see paper target, and they get to see, okay, here's, you know, here's my spread density. Did I did I hit really well? Where did I hit? Did I hit high left or anything like that? But Carlson, they look at that certain load, whether it's Longbeard or TSS, and they find that right that right choke, and they kind of done a lot of inf uh, work for you. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, Primos has a TSS choke. Um, it's just kind of cool. A little bit different than waterfowl. Mm -hmm. Not not too much, but waterfowl we have, you know, ported, non-ported, um, you know, extended, um, different. Everybody's got their different rating. They call it mid and long. Some call it by the diameter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but what do you use for ducks mainly? Mid-range, long-range? Yeah. I shoot everything with mid-range. Yeah. Yep. Did I, what, we missed some questions here. Oh. Uh, yep. Guys said we were talking about. Excited for it. Yeah. All right. So Dan is asking about the Rogers A-frame. So the Rogers Goosebuster three-man blind. We talked about it at the beginning of this podcast, but uh, we did really well with it. Josh got, got one real early and mm -hmm. used it the whole season. Uh, we had a, a ton, um, about a 1,000 of them. And we sold out. We sold out in December, I think. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I think I, I got easily 
20 hunts yeah. minimum out of that thing in the season. Because yeah. I hunted with it from teal season all the way yeah, to you, now. You were one of the first to get a hold of it because, yeah. yeah. And you're get, yeah, you're hunting it in teal season. So um, we're they're going to get back in. I just don't have them right now for a snow goose, guys, which it sucks. But uh, we got stuff working for next year. Mm-hmm. Was um, it, didn't you guys have a sale on a blind earlier this week? Yeah, it was probably the all. Well, we did all tan and the and X, A frame. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so if you're not a part of the email blast that we do, get signed you, up for that, or you constantly scroll our feed. Yeah, one of the ways you get signed up for the email blast or look at our feed. Sometimes we'll have A frame blinds on sale. We'll have layout blinds on sale. All sorts of different decoys mm-hmm. and steel shot and all sorts of good stuff. Mm-hmm. So the easiest uh, way to get signed up for our email blast. Right now would be as if you go to the rogersportingoods.com, the homepage, and I think if you just scroll to the bottom, you can enter your email address right there. But our email blast, we're putting out three to four emails a week, and it's like the best deals. As soon as we're like, oh, we're going to put this on sale, boom, we add it to an email blast, and it goes out right then and there. So if you get our emails, you're going to know when something, when the price drops, as soon as it drops. Yeah. So, um, yeah. and like when we don't have a current flyer going on, that's the best way to, to get that deal is when we send out a couple emails a week. So definitely get signed up for that yeah. and you'll, you'll be notified so um yeah you so, won't yeah. miss out on deals that's what happened to the rogers three man goosebuss are blind we we had we had a ton and sold out yeah is what it is this is our first year with it so that's good yeah you, and you never know first year on a product you're like yeah it may do well it may not and it did really well so mm-hmm. yeah and you liked it i love it <laughs> yeah. yeah i like it better than the avian yeah so and we're we're getting better we're getting better and better every year with it, so we got we'll have some modifications, but uh, we we felt like it did pretty well mm-hmm. once we got it dialed in. Um, but yeah, so everybody watching too, if you're if you hunt fields, are you a frame style, f- you know, bigger frame blind that hunts three to four, or are you layouts? Because we make a lot of layouts too. I'm just I feel like it's trending frame blind, but mm-hmm. I you know. You might not realize how many people are still running the, the layout blind I feel like kind I need thing. to do a Facebook poll on it. Yeah. That would be a good one. That would be yeah. a good Facebook poll. I know you did one the other day about who's going to win the Super Bowl. And 77% of people got it right. 77% of people got picked the Chiefs. And that's been pretty fun. You've been here most of your life? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So you're a big Chiefs fan, right? No. No? <laughs> I'm not a big football guy. Oh, honestly. okay. I figured you'd be diehard Chiefs if you lived here your whole life. Nah. Nah. Yeah, but I'll watch no the game if it's on. Right. I don't really follow sports. Yeah, we surprisingly, have. I know. <laughs> you follow ducks, right? Oh ducks yeah, I follow ducks. <laughs> yeah, we had some fun. It was a pretty good weekend. Everybody's kind of been on a kind of lighter step, a little bit of high all week, you mm-hmm. know, just stoked. But yeah, the Chiefs, Chiefs did it. Pretty mm-hmm. fun. Let's see. So, yeah, Clark just asked if you ever hunt four out of it. We advertise our Goosebuster three-man as a three-person blind because that's what we feel is safe and very comfortable, comfortable to Com- hunt out of. Um, I've hunted four out of it. Yeah. Josh has hunted four you out of it. You just better have small friends. Yeah. Or you better be good friends. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> that too. Yeah. No, three is the best. Actually, two is the best. Yeah. If you can put two of them together and you're hunting four guys, but... You can fit four. Yeah. It's just not as comfortable. Yeah. Sure. We, we called it, th- I mean, you know, the reason we called it three because we didn't want people with four thinking they could squeeze five. Yeah. Because. <laughs> uh, <laughs> not going to happen. It's not going to happen. So if you're hunting a group of five guys, which four and five happens a lot. Um, mm-hmm. You know, we recommend two blinds. And even if you have four guys and two blinds, that, the two blind look really makes you look like a ditch that's overgrown or mm-hmm. you know a bunch of bales or whatever you know the the wider that gets the more natural it looks it doesn't just look like this random eight foot blob. piece of blob of grass mm-hmm. you know yeah. the wider it gets it starts to look like it's really set up you know maybe it's a, a mound of dirt you know that's just covered in a bunch of grass that's been there forever yeah but, uh, so something about fitting like five guys in two a-frames it gives you room if you have a dog yeah. i know guys keep their dogs inside the a-frames but it also leaves you room for a grill and you yeah, can make yeah yeah i've always wanted to do that never have you never have no we did that you're too busy calling and and killing birds filming <laughs> yeah and, but we have a couple hunts a year we're just like all right guys this is this is the hunt 
We're going to be out here longer. All right, we're bringing the, the skillet and the grill. It's and more all about the, hanging out and food than it is killing birds. Yeah. <laughs> we're just like, this is what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to have a great time. We're going to laugh and call some ducks. and Might shoot some, might not, but it's... But other than that, you know, we have really good breakfast burritos. <laughs> So that's what it is. Yeah, and we don't forget the the hot sauce. We do we do it all. I mean, yeah, literally yeah. all. Of it. It's good. Yeah. So, anything else that we want to talk about? I'm trying to think. So I'm kind of interested, in, and you can comment here. But you know, what are some of the breakfasts? One of the weird ones, you know, that people cooked up. You know, I feel like it's always eggs, bacon. We did the tortilla and made a made some burritos. But I mean, anybody done like sausage gravy? And, Oh, I'm blog. sure. Yeah. That sounds amazing. And why are you talking about this at <laughs> lunchtime? It's 12.03, yeah. Oh. Our time. I've had boiled peanuts. Really? That sounds really good. Boiled peanuts are awesome. Really? You ever had them? No. Oh. I, I might have. I don't re- recall having them. Yeah. Last it's, last season, there was a gas station in town that sold boiled peanuts. So you'd fill up a big styrofoam cup with, with you and take them with you. Huh. I don't know that I've ever had them. I've heard of them, and I've seen them. I just don't know that I've ever personally eaten them. They're awesome. Yeah. I wish they sold them in gas stations. Yeah, I know, like, down south, it's, you go into yeah. gas stations, they got crock pots with them in there. Yeah, it's just not a thing here. No. Mm-hmm. But, uh, Unfortunate. Yeah. Any big plans for Outdoor Limits this year, 2020, other than, I mean, the personal life, but, I mean, as far 2020. as... 2020. Well, I'd like to travel a little bit more and knock some yep. stuff off the list. Mm-hmm. That's main thing. Maybe a dog. So we'll and, see. and the guys, are, we had a lot of guys on your earlier following that, that who mm-hmm. say they watch your channel. So mm-hmm. you're saying coming up, you have so a little bit of some crappie kayak fishing, so a little bit of some turkey, if you can get it in around you know, all the stuff you got going mm-hmm. on. And then you, we didn't talk about it, but you're going to talk about some of the gear that you use all year, some new reviews, mm-hmm. so they can get kind of like what's your thought. I mean, you put some of these decoys, some of these blinds through the ringer this year. Yeah. Now you get to say, hey. This Here's how what, it held up. This is what happened. This is what I thought. And this is how, you know, mm-hmm. things went down. So that's what your guys can watch. Um, and apparently you're going to kill a turkey with a bow. Apparently. Yeah. Apparently, yeah. apparently <laughs> that's coming up in 2020. Yeah. Found that out on this live stream. Thanks, Levi. Yeah. Thanks, Levi. Yeah. For sure. So, guys, if you're watching the live. Outdoor Limits. Outdoor Limits. Right here. Um, and then if you guys are looking for some sales on some snow goose stuff. Right there. Yes. Um, That's the front page of the website, isn't it? Yeah, it you is. Click right hey, there. Show them where to sign up for the yeah, mailer. Yeah, all the way oh, down. Yeah. Right there. Right there. Right there. You guys see that? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, pretty cool. Um, Snow Goose Flyer, sign up for the email. Right there, the website. And then if you ever want to look at some stuff, all sorts of good waterfowl hunting stuff that he does right there. Solid entertainment. Yeah. Ah, uh, subpar. <laughs> As most most of the comment section would say, sub, yeah. subpar trash. Yeah. Uh, whatever. The guy's asking you to come up to South Dakota, so. Hey. Yeah. There you go. Uh, yeah. that early honker season, huh? That's exactly right. Mm-hmm. Get a head start on things. Well, yeah. but, I mean, but I love dove hunting. Oh, oh I do too. That's, yeah. those, those, that's the deal breaker with Those me. little chicken nuggets, they're so good. I know. I love yeah, those if you guys like chicken nuggets. dove hunting, he has a pretty good dove video last oh, yeah. year. That was a good one. I know over that little little thing of water just oh, on top of the that hill little puddle. That was yeah. awesome. I didn't shoot a single duck last year. He was duck hunting. You didn't? No. Where were you, where were you at? Kansas and some terrible spots. Really? Apparently. Oh geez. He was. You're in Kansas. Mm-hmm. And he had some water and he had mojos and you, you said you thought you were duck hunting for doves. Yeah. No, they'd come in yeah. and cup up just like a duck on a little pond. That All was right. awesome. Yeah, that's that's what I want. Uh, doves. I had a pretty good dove shoot the year before, but last year was just. Nothing. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right, guys. Well, we're over an hour, so. Yeah, we've we've been on here talking about duck hunting, turkey hunting, crappie fishing, and, and dove food, hunting, and, now and food, it's and it's lunchtime. Yes. At least here in Central. It's you lunchtime. guys from listening might be hungry, too. So, you get you some you're boiled peanuts. For that. Yeah. <laughs> get some boiled peanuts. Yes. All right. Well, all right, we're going to get out of here. Thanks for being here, Josh. We yeah, hey, no it. problem. Thank thanks you. for having me. Yeah. Check it out. Outdoor Limits is a pretty cool place to, to get lost in some duck hunting videos. Get lost in the sauce. Yep. Yes. Go down uh, that YouTube rabbit hole and yep. yeah. get dove yeah. into the For sure. channel. All right, guys. We'll see you next time.